Hey everyone, I'm Matthew Whitrock, design lead for our newest set, which I'm excited to introduce today. We're calling this set, drumroll please, Remix Rumble. We've got a full playlist today, so I'll open with gameplay and then pass it to the rest of the lineup to chat music, cosmetics, ranked, and more. We'll also jump backstage at a few points to give you a behind the scenes look at how different parts of Remix Rumble came together. All right, let's jump right into the bands. And by bands, I mean traits. In Remix Rumble, you're the DJ and the board is your turntable. By combining different traits, you'll create a medley of beats and genres. Let's start with familiar chart toppers, beginning with the ultimate pop stars, KDA. Get the entire lobby bumping with KDA and their most dedicated superfans. Position them just so, and you'll find yourself at the performance of a lifetime with incredible choreography and a bunch of bonus stats. Okay, let's make like a collie and hop over to the next band. True Damage and Pentakill are also in the mix, and both stay true to their names. True Damage grants extra attack speed. Wait, that can't be right. Ah, this is more like it. <laughs> True Damage members are all about style and will gain a unique bling bonus that'll power them up as you itemize them. Oh, and before you ask, Akali will be able to be played in KDA or True Damage. Her trait will change based on whichever band is trending at the time. All right, metalheads, Pentakill's up next. Pentakill members have damage reduction and bonus damage that increases as they score kills. And if your team manages to get a Pentakill, then their bonuses will increase again. Just be careful in Yorick's mosh pit. Then there's Heartsteel, fresh off their debut and already making their mark on the Convergence. These guys are ready to bring the energy and do whatever it takes for their fans. They may have started out underground, but they're certainly able to take you to the top of the charts and the lobby if you can conquer their risky stuff. But we can't put on a proper remix rumble with only four bands. We also have some all new groups entering the convergence. With original TFT looks, Lulu and Ziggs make up the jittery, ridiculous, hyperpop duo Glitter Bomb. Speaking of original TFT skins, Remix Rumble has plenty. There's a whole new class, super fans, who show off their fandom with style. The trait pumps up your headliner, more on that later, by turning one or more of their items into radiant items. My personal favorite new look is Bard, who has joined the jazz trio Free Flow. He and his meeps are looking as smooth as they sound. Before I get into the mechanics, Let's head backstage to learn more about how we made some of these traits with Alex Cole and one of our lesser known devs. We knew set 10 was gonna be our big music set. Um, so when we think back of kind of like what the steps were, we knew we were gonna have that this big music moment. We were celebrating 10 sets of TFT, um, which was gonna be huge. I um, mean, really, we just kind of leaned right in and we were like, cool, we know we're gonna do all these cool origins. And then we go through the process of what skin lines do we have available that we can tie those to. Um, and luckily we uh, had a ton of cool and groovy skin lines. And we obviously we played with them a little bit with like space group becoming disco and some stuff like that. But um, yeah, we were pretty quick to just turn right in and be like, oh, wow, well, we have tons of things to pull from, which is really exciting. So I'm pretty excited about Heartsteel. Um, the economy trait is always a fan favorite of ours, but we've had this problem for a long time where the economy trait is you get it at 2-1 or you don't really play it. And so this time we took a very clear goal of how do you play it if you don't hit it at 2-1? And so what you can do is you can play it at any point in the game, and the more you've got, the bigger the payout. You try to lose by just a little bit, but even if you win, you're still gonna be getting the, those fan, and then it's going to cash out after a few turns, and so you can even pivot into it in the late game, and I think that's gonna be a real skill-expressive part of the game, is that ability to go, okay, I'm in a position where I can play Heart Steel for, for a few turns, and then get my reward, and then pivot back, and I think that's gonna lead to a lot of really cool skill expressive moments. My favorite trait this set is definitely the country trait, um, which features our Desperado band. 
historically in TFT, we've done a lot of really cool things with summon traits. We did Baron this last set, we did Innovator in set six, um, and I'm really excited for Country to join those ranks. So with Country, we have something called the Midnight Horse, which is Hecarim, uh, and when your champions um, sort of get lower or lose health, um, Hecarim will ride in and save the day. Um, so operating a little bit like Galio um, from set four, if players remember that one. So I think the challenges with these two is we kept trying to find the identity for each of them and they ended up being really intertwined with each other. Um, so there was a day where myself, Whitrock, the set lead, and Mort literally sat down and mapped out the entire set on a whiteboard. Um, I don't remember who it was, but one of us was just like, oh, we don't have a summon trait. Um, and we kind of played around with that. Um, and on the flip side, we were also playing around with like, is it risky to have our econ trait be one of the main verticals? Like, is that something we want to do or try? Um, which is really exciting. And we ended up going with it um, and kind of seeing those two traits in particular like kind of kept going back and forth and, and changing shape with each other um, but we were happy with how it all landed yeah i would say it's pretty clear on this team that i'm um, the probably the biggest ari stan around <laughs> so uh, kda being in the set is a huge uh, exciting moment for me <laughs>When deciding which mechanics to include in Remix Rumble, we wanted to bring you a Greatest Hits playlist from past sets, starting with Runeterra Reforged. Portals are making a comeback. They'll have a bit less impact than some of the wilder ones from last set. We can do without you, Stillwater Hold. But they're sure to continue creating memorable moments. We won't be bringing back Legends for Remix Rumble. We learned a lot from seeing how Legends could influence the meta and individual enjoyment of the set, so we feel like there's more exploration and experimentation to be done in this space before we potentially revisit it, but we'll keep you updated along the way. Okay, back to what we are bringing back. One of TFT's most beloved mechanics is returning in an updated way. No, not augments although we will be introducing new augments for Remix Rumble as well, I'm talking about Headliners, our fresh take on the chosen mechanic from Fates. Headliners are the star of your board. They appear occasionally in shops and are purchased at two stars. Headliners have tons of immediate power and they give you plus one to one of their traits. But here's where Headliners diverge from Chosen. Each one will have a specific headliner effect that empowers them in a way that only a true fan would appreciate. Take Bard from the Jazz Trio, who improvises a few notes to either heal an ally or deal a bit of damage. When Bard is your headliner, every 10 casts will generate a meep that allows him to play one extra note on his first cast of combat. Bard is the type of headliner that will scale into the end game. Whether that scale is major or minor depends on how early you can get it. Some headliners will be difficult to find endgame carries. Take Yorick, a legendary unit who temporarily summons ghouls. When this headbanger is your headliner, the ghouls will be bigger and deal more damage. And one more thing about our mechanics. All of them will be harmonizing together. So keep an eye and an ear out for that. All right, let's check back in with Alex and Mort to talk more about headliners. So early on, when we were exploring the different mechanics, we uh, knew we were doing a music theme. And so we kind of had this image where it's like, okay, the band is all on there together, but what what is it that makes it special? How can we twist it? And we kept coming back to, it's like, well, who's who's singing at the moment? Who's the star of the show, if you will? And that kind of led us to a system we call Headliner, which was like, okay, you're going to pick who your headliner is. And we kept coming up with versions that were slightly different than Chosen, but had a lot of the same advantages. Chosen was one of our, our first big mechanics that wasn't just like galaxies or a variation. And it was something that allowed every champion to kind of be the centerpiece, right? Like you would tell stories of, oh, this was the game I got Silas chosen and I did this thing, or this was the game I got Kennen chosen. But what was interesting is as we were kind of researching it, we realized that was before a lot of these other mechanics, right? Augments hadn't been around. 
And so a lot of the burden of the system has changed. And so as we were looking at this and kind of seeing all the pieces come together, it felt like kind of a greatest hits of TFT, which once we realized that, that was such a great opportunity to bring it all together. And so that's when we've kind of anchored on Headliner being sort of the upgraded chosen. You know, we've got Radiant items, augments, portals, and it really does sort of feel like 10 sets worth of TFT knowledge all coming together to make this really awesome set. I think with the headliner mechanic, players will be most excited about the champ fantasies that it unlocks. So whether you are a player that really loves re-rolling those one or two costs, or you're a player that likes those four cost carry fantasies, um, headliner allows you to do any direction you want every game um, and locks a lot of variation, which is exciting. These are things that we never predict coming in. Like, what is the built different comp of this set? Like, what are the combinations that we, during production, have no idea are coming that we see videos of at 2 a.m. Uh, from China? And we're like, wow, that's amazing. I can't believe they came up with this idea. Those cool combinations that keep you coming back and have an exciting payoff, I think is always what we're looking for when we're making new sets. It's like, what is the cool next thing to try out? <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Cole Hicks, lead composer of Remix Rumble, and I'm here to talk about the heart of this set, the music. In Remix Rumble, each trait brings new sounds to your board. While you're building your team, you're building your track. Remix Rumble was an all-hands-on-deck moment for our team. Many different composers and collaborators created original music for each origin trait and made it possible for all of it to meld together in any combination based on whichever units you have out on your board. To make genres like metal sound seamless with, say, jazz or pop, we wrote two main songs. Through a mix of layers that contain drums, chords, and melodies, your track will be built alongside your team. And as the game progresses, your track will too starting off one way during the preparation phase and building up to a more complex chorus for the battle. Let me show you an example of how all this will look and sound, starting with our disco band, the Disco Knots. Their trait gives you a placeable disco ball that will heal your allies and grant them attack speed. As you get later into the game, you can add in more Disco Knots to strengthen the trait. Then you could add in a destructive splash of Pentakill for a killer guitar solo, soaring over it all. Now let's talk a bit about the tracks we wrote. For groups like KDA and Pentakill that already exist in the League IP, we tried to capture their instrumental essence with some TFT twists. And we brought in new genres like 8-bit and country, but more on those later. We also made sure powerful units like Jin got their moment in the spotlight. For Maestro, Jin's legendary trait, we mixed in a Paganini-esque violin solo to create a modern interpretation of classical music, fit for the virtuoso himself. This sound was the perfect fit for a trait that deals extra damage to tactician health and a champion whose ability builds up in a cadenza of damage. By putting out different units on your board, you'll create a symphony of controlled chaos. Try combining the relentless drums of Pentakill with our harpsichord-heavy emo band, Big Sad. Or, maybe as your comp changes, you'll create music that features the base of true damage alongside the groovy horn section of Disco Knots. It's absolutely ridiculous, and that's just TFT. All right, let's head backstage with the team for a quick recording session. <laughs> I think one of the challenges of working on this set is the multiple genres and how they are going to be remixed into one another. There are a total of, I believe, 10 to 12 genres, um, some of them more bespoke than others because it's based on our virtual band, but all of this are being done by seven composers together. So this is the biggest collaboration within Riot composers that we have done for our Team Fight Tactics. Authenticity is both a goal and a challenge. Um, 
because we're doing so many different genres, uh, and some of them have a fair amount of crossover as far as types of sounds and things that we're using. For example, we're doing a DJ Sona uh, genre, but we also have a straight like EDM genre. And so you almost have to really lean into the things that, that might be different about those two things. Like we have this established thing that, that Riot has done versus a, a genre that already exists and really kind of leaning into some of the more expected things that, that players are going to want to be hearing. How do we make it so that each of our elements actually stand out in a way that right away an audience would be able to be like, oh, like they're doing this punk rock thing without getting it confused with Pentakill, right? A metal band. They both use guitars, they both use drums, they both use bass. How are those genres being executed differently and is able to be recognized by our players right away? KDA is another example of like, what it's not just what are the things that make it sound like KDA, it's what are the things that make it sound like KDA if just the drums are playing or if just the chords are playing. One of the cool things about this set is that it is it is supposed to be a bit crazy yeah. sometimes. So we were able to sort of like lean into it being like, oh, that's, that sounds a bit uh, silly, yeah, but it's And some surprising cool. things came yeah. out that were really cool. Like, for example, I think we discovered that saxophone solo over heart steel is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> we have also discovered that a violin solo on top of Jason's EDM track is very cool. Very cool. And we would have never made those choices as composers. Um, normally. Unless, normally. Right. It's okay to lean into the silliness sometimes because it is a fun idea and it's supposed to be fun. Right. Whereas other genres obviously will work in a way where you're like, oh, that's like I would put that on my playlist and listen to it. Yeah. For us, the collaboration is a, lot, a, a little chaotic. And I think that's also us embracing that energy of like, we're not entirely sure if this is going to work. And we're just kind of, you know, like riding with the flow and write what we believe in. And then we come together and let's hear how this is going to go. TFT is the space where, as a composer, I get to play around the most. and you know, basically try whatever fun ideas I might have. Uh, the team is very open to experimentation. So from that perspective, even though it is a fair amount different than anything we've done in TFT before, um, I think TFT is the perfect place to do it. And I think the players of TFT are also really on board with, with these kinds of fun ideas. 100%. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Ananda Gupta, Design Director on TFT. Today, I'm here to give an update on cosmetics, and then I'll talk about Ranked, as well as a much anticipated release for many of our players, the Asia Pacific Mobile Launch. We're thrilled to bring more high quality personalization that will be released throughout the start of Remix Rumble. Ahead of that, we want to give you a sneak peek and equip you with an understanding of the release schedule, both to prepare collectors as well as inform folks who want to nab their favorite. Chibi Set and Chibi Heartsteel Set have entered the building, and they're looking to pull off a heist straight to the top of the lobby. Chibi Heartsteel Set moves fast and will depart the Treasure Realms after the first two weeks of Remix Rumble. And if you want more, the KDA Arena is definitely more. Drop your comp smack dab in the middle of a KDA show and take top four, or bottom four. It won't matter with an arena this stunning. After two weeks, Chibi KDA Akali will screech onto the scene. Then, the moment I've been waiting for, KDA Kaisa will hit the Convergence three weeks into the set. She and KDA Akali will be available through Treasure Realms that will only last until our next event. Each drop will provide high value content from chibis to mythic little legends and even a chance to hit a random chibi variant like Dragon Mancer Ash or Star Guardian Lux. But the biggest high roll of those collector capsules is KDA Kaisa. Kaisa is the centerpiece for players looking to flaunt that extra special drop but Prestige Treasure Realms are full of high-value offerings from past sets. So, whether you're a collector looking to pick up something you missed, or a little legend enthusiast just getting your first chibi, no matter what you hit, it's bound to hit hard. After Remix Rumble ships, we've got even more work ahead of us. We know players want more say in what they purchase, and we're working towards exactly that in a system we're internally calling the Seasonal Store. We're not quite ready to go into the finer details yet, but I am ready to get into Remix Rumble's pass. Remix Rumble marks our transition to three sets a year, and we're updating our pass structure to reflect that. We'll still have two passes in every set, but since sets now last four months, each pass will be two months long. So we're redistributing rewards and accelerating pass progression to make all the rewards easier to obtain. 
Not every pass will look the same. Each Pass Plus will have different high-value rewards. For example, you'll see our new Neon Stage Arena in Remix Rumble's first pass, and in the Rumble's second half, Sugar Cone Poro. <laughs> and just as our pass is changing to accommodate three sets a year, our ranked season is also changing. Like League of Legends, we're adding Emerald Tier to our ranked ladder. It'll add more climbing room, while also recognizing the skill progression that players show between Platinum and Diamond. This comes at the perfect time as we transition to creating three sets a year and three ranked seasons to go with them. Without mid-sets, there's no soft reset of your rank throughout the season, so you'll have more time to track your progress on the expanded ladder, prove your skill, and get new Emerald rewards. We're not looking to make the climb harder. Emerald and a longer season should mean a smoother, more consistent climb overall. We know TFT is a more chaotic game than League, and we don't want to punish or reward you too much for performance outliers. You can play great and still low roll in TFT, and our ranked system should and will reflect that. Okay, before you get too excited and queue up for ranked, let's chat mobile. The launch of Remix Rumble in late November will be the first time TFT is available on mobile in APAC regions. And we're shipping a number of improvements along with this launch that will impact the entire world. But first, I want to thank our APAC players for their patience. We've been working towards bringing mobile to you since we launched it during Galaxies, and we know that you've awaited its arrival ever since. In preparation for this launch, our tools and engine team has been hard at work making mobile usability, stability, and performance improvements. And for the tablet players out there, one of these improvements is tablet support. Come Remix Rumble, you can say goodbye to the black bars and wonky scaling when playing on tablet, and hello to a smoother, prettier, tablet-tailored experience. We've seen a ton of anticipation for TFT Mobile in APAC and tablet support across the world, and we can't wait to kick it all off with Remix Rumble. So, APAC players, make sure to pre-register for our launch, as we'll be offering multiple pre-registration milestone rewards, from treasure tokens to a new little legend, Boba T-River Sprite. And if you're not in APAC, don't worry, this little sprite will eventually be available to everyone. Was that the last boba? Yep. Oh. Okay. <sighs> hey everyone, Sherman back to talk about all things TFT Esports. It's been awesome to see the growth of TFT Esports over the last few sets. We've seen three sets of steady viewer growth for set championships, and with the Runeterra Reforged Championship, we're hoping to make it four. We're about five weeks out from our first global LAN event, the TFT Vegas Open. It'll be from December 8th through the 10th, with 512 competitors from around the world as they take over the MGM Grand. I first want to say that we were blown away by how quickly competitor passes sold out back in September, and we can't wait to see you battle it out there. The event happens early in Remix Rumble, testing players' ability to adapt, innovate, and lead the meta. This is a moment where players from anywhere can step into the spotlight and become IRL headliners. The player that comes out on top will walk away with $100,000, a trophy, and most importantly, the TFT Vegas Open title. And even if you don't get first, the 128 players who make it to day two will win a piece of the $300,000 prize pool and all 512 players who participate in the event will get a unique emote based on how far they make it into the tournament. But don't worry, the Vegas Open won't be a replacement for a championship. Now that we've switched over to three sets a year, we're adjusting to have a competitive season for each one. So rest assured there will be a Remix Rumble championship at the end of the set. It'll be the culmination of Remix Rumble, so we have high expectations for the comps players will bring to the finals now that they've had a chance to master the set. For those of you competing in Vegas, PvE goes live the second week of November. So get out there and start crafting your go-to comps. As for everyone else, we're super excited for our first ever LAN event, and we hope to see you all there, either in person or digitally. All right, thanks so much for watching. Good luck and have fun out there. Till next time. <laughs>